Hello guys and welcome to another A2 tutorial. Uh, this time in combination with Thinker's Construct. Not a common uh, combination I guess, I haven't done one before. But uh, well, and I should say that I'm not sure how useful this is or how often it's useful. It really depends on what mod pack you have or mod selection uh, and the recipes in it. But um, it's a fun build, I tried it and it worked and it was kind of a challenge to make it work in a good way. Perhaps there are other ways to do it, but um, uh, I tried to do it with only A2 and Tinker's Construct. If you have other mods, perhaps that would be even easier. But um, I'll go through it in detail. I will not build it again, but I'll show you exactly how it works so you can build it if you want to. So right now I'm in the middle of a bronze order. Let's see here. We have a few left to do. So I have a very small network here. We have only the bare essentials. Uh, quite a bunch of channels going this way. A total of 19 is used for this one. Um, and you can make it larger. Um, it really depends on how many recipes you have. An important detail here is that we have one recipe per drain. So that means that if you only have a few recipes that you only will make in the smeltery, perhaps it's a it's an alloy that you can only do here and not in in some other machine, then you can have a pretty small one, perhaps dedicated only for that. Uh, but this setup you cannot share uh, drain. Well, I guess you can put one up here as well. That's true. Uh, but I think it's easier just to make it larger. I don't remember the exact size, but I think they can be larger than, uh, than this one. It's uh, 7 by 7. So, okay, let's start down here. Uh, what we have. One crafting storage. I think it's a very good idea to only craft one thing at a time. Otherwise, you might mess up the recipe or you will mess up the result and that will give you incorrect feedback and you may, might have leftovers in the smeltery. So do one thing at a time. Perhaps it should be a dedicated. Uh, I'm not sure. We have some stuff. I only have ores and ingots and then a few other things that we're using in, in some alloys. Um, but that's about it. A little storage and that. So this works uh, like a normal Thinker's Construct uh, smeltery. I'm using a hopper here. You don't have to use that uh, in uh, to access the controller. But if you have more recipes than, uh, than you can fit in one interface, then you need another one and then I don't think you can have two controllers in one smeltery so then you pretty much need to do this. Also, I tried this in another mod pack and then I couldn't access with the interface and put items into the controller. But the hopper could access it. So I think it's a good idea to, to do this one. You get a buffer here and it will feed in items as, uh, as it needs or can. The recipes themselves are not very uh, advanced or special in any way. I'm using, for, for all these basic stuff, lead, two lead ingots from one ore. A simple ore doubling, you will not get in the smeltery any bonus outcome. For example, if you have, um, let's see here, copper ingot and we, make, we can get it from with pulverizer you have a 10% chance to get uh, this uh, additional gold and for some ores that might be uh, a reason not to use this but then for other it doesn't matter you perhaps you don't need the extra gold in this case so all the ingots are made from ores one to two and then all the alloys for example bronze here i make them from ingot to ingot so keep, keep that in mind when you're making the recipes that ores give double and then ingots give one to one. 
Uh, and the reason for that is that if we, I don't want to keep ores in the system and use them for several things. Um, I rather make make them step by step. You make iron with iron ore, and then you make some alloys from from the from the ingot. It's also sometimes easier to do the math because you might need only one, for example. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the recipes. Maybe we might come back to that. So if we take a look down here, and before we go up into the details, if I want to craft iron, well, simple enough, we send one. If we want to craft, uh, let's see, bronze again, that we did a few times ago. So five will give us eight because we have to make the recipe one plus three. So that will give us these eight. They are all sent up here. You can see them in here. They tin melt very fast and then comes to copper. And then we get into details of how this works. One level emitter per recipe per output. So this one will have a crafting card and then we put the bronze ingot here. That means that we will emit this redstone signal when we're crafting bronze ingot and only that time. So that means that this blue network here, it only has two item, uh, two uh, uh, devices. From the drain, we place one fluid import. You can do this with other mods as well, of course. I think my first build was with thermal expansion, but at the time of this recording, they, the fluid ducts are not implemented in the 116 packs. So perhaps this could work. So from the import bus through this toggle bus, because we only want this import bus to be active when we're making bronze. In this case, bronze, perhaps it's not a big deal because I don't think any other recipes will use bronze. So if we have bronze, this could be always on. But iron, for example, I have it over here. Iron is used in different recipes. So for this emitter, keeping an eye on, on, uh, the, uh, on the iron production, should only output iron when we want to make iron. If we use iron in, I think, molten pig iron, it's a good example. We use iron in that recipe among other things. And if we place iron in here and this one will suck it out, then the blood and the, uh, what was it? Uh, the blood and the clay will be left in here and we will fail the craft. So it's important then to keep these ones only active when we are crafting what we want. For most recipes at least. And to do that we have this toggle bus and this emitter will only activate that toggle bus. So this down here, because I have these, uh, these fibers uh, connected on the bottom side, these ones, fluid storage bus, all the way, they are always online, but they are not connected to anything. You see, we have only one channel in this green network right now. But when we lit the emitter, the toggle bus will enable and will connect this one. It's offline now. So they will never work or do things unless we want to. And that goes for all of these setups. Pig iron, manulin, lead, and so on. You don't need to configure... Oops, I didn't mean to do that. You don't need to configure the storage bus. Just usual stuff. So, and of course, on the casting tables, we place our ingot. Cast, this one. Uh, and then on the bottom you can have an, like an import bus over here, but then you need one channel for each. I think it's a waste of uh, resources and channels. So just regular old hoppers, chain them together and send it into any interface that you want. You can have the same interface for all of these. I just place them like this to make it easier. So basically from these six channels, 
well, you might reduce one and have one common for all of them. So that's a possible way to make it to save channels, but it will be more, more of cabling instead. So let's do another crafting job. Perhaps the night slime. Five of those. Yeah, that's nice. It's a big job. Sending him up here. You can see we get all the stones in the hopper and they will place in here one by one. When it's full, we still have some. Oops. Ah, it was too fast. Now everything in here. They will melt one by one. We can see that we have purple slime, but it will not be output anywhere. Currently, this is the only import bus that can extract anything from the smeltery. And it can only pull out night slime. And we'll get that once the stone has melted. This one is just waiting. As long as we are not finished with the crafting job, this will be turned on. Uh, in the other pack, in the 116.5 pack, uh, I think it was all the mods that I tried it in, everything worked perfectly, well, except for this part. The emitter would be lit, working fine, it will extract all the slime. Four ringers left to do, you can see it down here, up top left, that we're importing into the very small green network, store it in here, and then we'll just pull it out. So it would work, and then once the job was done, I could see that in the, uh, in the crafting, crafting storage or monitor, it was done, but the emitter wouldn't go off, so it will stay on, so that would mess up everything. I just had to do like this, and then place it, and it will be and it will be off hopefully that's a bug only for that pack or in that version uh, so i hope that will work for you but otherwise this should work i think it's a good idea to keep a casting table or uh, or a basin uh, somewhere in case you run into problems or perhaps when you're making the first alloy or smelt to get the ingot that you need to you know to place in here I haven't filled these ones up yet, so because you need an ingot to place it here, uh, and also to make the the recipe. Nor most of the time you do that because it's a processing pattern. Uh, you cannot. I don't think you get it by free. Uh, no, you won't. So yeah, I think that covers everything. Uh, we have covered the patterns. Good thing I remembered to do this. The simple ones are very easy, just or to ingot, and then you need to do the math. So one clay, two rotten flesh, and two iron ingot to make pig iron, and so on. Um, and here I'm going against what I said at first. Here I'm using ore to make uh, ingots, but you can do that with, uh, with ingots as well, of course. Okay, great. I think that pretty much makes us done. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you know where to place them. If you wonder how this works, then I, I guess you just have to ask me if it wasn't clear enough. So thanks for watching and I hope I see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.